Hi everybody, the audio today didn't get recorded by accident, so I thought I'd re-record the whole thing for you now. Um, so today's talk, which I did earlier today at the service, was about prayer. We'd been, as a church, uh, quite caught up in, in prayer. Uh, so not the week just gone, but the week before that, we had a bunch of Koreans come and spend time with us, praying with us, pleading with God on our behalf, weeping and wetting the soil with tears of prayer. And it was a really incredible, really challenging time for, for many of us. Uh, many of the leaders in the churches in Pontypridd got really challenged by what we saw. And so today I wanted to sort of unpack some of the stuff uh, that affected me during the week, made me think about things, and hopefully encourage us to, to pray more, to look at prayer uh, as a matter of priority in our lives and to look at some of the, the things that can be difficult, uh, the things that can help or have helped me. Uh, and so hopefully this talk will help with that, hopefully. So as I say, during the week we had uh, Koreans come and pray with us and they did Korean style prayer. And that's a very different style of praying to what we're used to uh, here in Wales. Uh, it's very much prayer cranked up to 11. It's very loud. Everyone play, prays all at once, uh, usually accompanied by some really loud music. It's, it's quite intense, uh, but it's full of passion, full of uh, emotion, just pleading with God, calling for him to move in these times and in, in this nation. And it was a really, really powerful time. So there's lots of different ways to pray. Um, as a group, uh, what we often call corporate prayer, uh, so we have prayer together as Christians rather than on your own. So you get this Korean style prayer, which is very loud and everyone praying all at the same time uh, and probably a bit of a culture shock to a lot of us, uh, but was really, uh, really cool once we got to grips with it. Uh, you then have prayer in a sort of call and response kind of way. So more traditional churches have this quite a lot. They'll have someone say a prayer from the front and the members of the congregation will say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Or someone will pray something and everyone else will say, thanks be to God. Sort of this led prayer, which everyone sort of agrees with and joins in with at the end. So that's two ways of praying. Um, a third is what we're maybe more used to uh, here in the West, um, which is what's commonly referred to as popcorn prayer. So that's when uh, one person prays and then another person prays, kind of like popcorn going pop. Pop, 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 and lots of different people uh, praying and take it in turns to pray and will agree with everyone as they pray along and listen to each other and pray agreement over what's being said. Uh, there's often um, difficulty in that method of praying in that uh, sometimes you get two people trying to pray at the same time um, when you're doing the popcorn style prayer and you get people being very British and apologising for interrupting other people and go, oh no, after you, oh no, after you, uh, which can be uh, quite entertaining, um, but you know, reveals one of the problems of that style of prayer, I guess. Um, another one is that if you say, oh, we're going to pray about these things, uh, you'll often get the first person pray through all of those things and so everyone that follows has nothing really left to pray other than saying, yep, I agree with what Dave said, yeah, or I agree with what Boris said, you know, whatever it was, whoever it was, whatever the name is. Um, so, you know, you can often feel like uh, you've, you've not got anything to add. And sometimes uh, people find this style of prayer really difficult. Introverted people hate public speaking, and this kind of prayer is kind of public speaking. You know, people are listening to what you're saying. Ah, the horror. Um, so it can be quite intimidating for other people. Uh, if you Google uh, types of group or corporate prayer, you'll get these three come up and you'll get a fourth one, which is usually sort of united prayer, you know, praying all at once. But for me, that's just Korean prayer, just with the volume turned down. So it doesn't seem like a completely different thing to me. One that's never listed, or in, I didn't find in any of the lists when I looked, was sung prayer. And I think this is actually, probably in the West, the most common form of prayer in a group. Uh, many of the songs that we sing are prayers in song. You know, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, it's a prayer. Build your kingdom, it's a prayer. Um, break my heart, for what breaks yours? Prayer. 
Um, and you know, we often overlook the fact that many of the songs that we sing are prayerful songs. Uh, there's good evidence for a lot of these forms of prayer. Obviously the sung prayer, that's just psalms. That's what David and the other psalmists do all the time is sing their prayers to God. It's really common. Um, you get uh, people reciting prayers of previous generations, uh, calling upon the prayers that others had written down. It's what this call and response type thing, pretty common. Uh, in Acts 4, there's mention of all uh, the disciples raising their voices together in prayer. Sort of sounds pretty Korean to me. Interestingly, the one that we do probably most often in our prayer meetings, a popcorn prayer, I can't seem to find any actual evidence for in the Bible. I can't find a thing that says this person prayed and then this person prayed and then this person prayed and then these two people tried to pray at the same time and there was lots of apologizing and then one of them started praying and then everyone agreed and got on with their lives. I can't find any evidence of that style of prayer, which is weird because it's the most common one that we do. Um, but yeah, for me, there's all these different kinds of ways of praying in a group, uh, pay, praying as gathered Christians. And I think for me this week or the week just gone with the Koreans really challenged me about how do we pray when we are united, when we're together praying as a group and how can that look? And sort of challenged uh, my preconceptions as to what that looks like. Um, and I think challenged a lot of the other church leaders in Pontypri trying to work out how that looks so uh, things may change in the future we may do things slightly differently i hope in terms of uh, group prayer um, i'll keep you updated but what i really wanted to look at today was personal prayer because for me personal prayer it's it's kind of like uh, when you get together as a band when you get together as a band and go through a song it's really helpful if the musicians have spent time learning that song and practicing that song in private so that when they come together they can put it together with others who know know the music know the song put it together and it becomes this harmonious wonderful thing it's kind of like that a bit with prayer for me what happens in the group context should be informed by what happens in personal prayer so i think personal prayer is really important and yeah we should be uh, what is reflected in the group times we share in praying together should be um, you know, built upon time spent one-on-one -on -one in prayer with God. So prayer in the personal context, what does that mean? What is prayer? How do we do it? Uh, so there are verses like this. So Ephesians 6, 18 says, Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And on first glance, that's like a, yeah, yeah, pray all the time. Yeah, great. Um, and some people will read it like that. Um, others will look at that verse and be filled with anxiety and overwhelmed because if you're meant to pray all kinds of prayers at all occasions in different ways, that's a lot. That's a lot of different prayers. You know? And there's so many prayers. You get prayers of thanksgiving, uh, prayers of repentance, uh, prayers of intercession, uh, praying in tongues, prayers of blessing, prayers of lament, uh, the prayer of faith that, you know, we all pray as we become Christians saying we need you God. You know, there's all these different kinds of prayers, prayers of confession. There's all different types of prayers that are you know, useful in different situations, but it can be like walking into a room that you need to sort out and looking at all the stuff in the room and going, oh my goodness, there's just so much stuff here. Where on earth do I begin? I don't know about you, but I've had moments like that when I've said, oh, I'm gonna sort this room out today. I've walked into it, looked at all the stuff, gone, this is too much, closed the door, walked away and made a cuppa. You know, sometimes you can look at something and you can have uh, just too much going on and so you avoid the whole thing because it's too big, too much to tackle, too big a thing to, to handle. So if you feel like that, um, you're not you're not alone. Sometimes I feel like that with these kind of things. I'm sure there are others who feel that way too. So don't worry if you look at that and go, ah, um, I'm going to try and give you some helpful tips, um, what, things that I found helpful, um, and give you some guidance on what the Bible says about prayer to hopefully get you started. So personal prayer. Before we get into sort of the tips 
um, and specifically where I think you should begin, I wanted to look at how we approach prayer. So for me, there are three key things. There has to be three, because uh, you know, it's a preach. That's kind of the rules. Um, the first is this, when we approach prayer, we do it boldly. Hebrews 4.16 says, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. So for me, this is fundamental to our understanding of prayer. We can approach God as our father with confidence and boldness. He's a God who loves us. He is a God who gave his all for us, died for us on the cross to make us worthy of coming in his presence, not through any of our own efforts, but through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. We've been made okay with God. We're okay to come into his presence. We don't have to come with fear and trembling. We can come before him boldly with confidence. And that's really important. The second, and this is a verse that got read a lot during the week when the Koreans were with us. Um, it comes from 2 Chronicles where it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We're called to humble ourselves in prayer, to approach God with the respect and the awe and just the wowness that God deserves. And I think it's good to hold these two things in tension. If you approach God with boldness and confidence, but don't have humility, you can approach God kind of arrogantly, uh, like a spoiled brat, and just be like, I want this, God, give me this. Um, but if you approach God humbly with boldness, you can be like, I approach you confidently, God, but I know that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I have amazing amounts of respect for you as well. If you just have humility, um, without the boldness, you can sort of approach God quite timidly, uh, a little bit sheepishly. Um, but it's important to have the boldness there, to the confidence that God loves you. He's made you okay in his sight through all that Jesus has done. Um, so it's good to hold those two things in tension, uh, have them together. Uh, the third, I've taken a psalm pretty much at random. Um, this comes from Psalm 6, where it says, I am worn out from my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Here the psalmist is just being honest. And that's the, the third really important thing. It's to be honest, honest with God when you pray. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're feeling. He knows what you're going through. He knows all that. So there's no point trying to put on a show or a pretense and trying to pretend that you're a certain way or speak in a way that's not really you. you know, just be honest with God. You know, the Psalms, as we've studied them as a church uh, on lunch times for the last two years, you know, we've, if there's nothing else that we took away, it's that the Psalmists are brutally honest. They don't sugarcoat things. Uh, they just say how it is. I'm like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm broken. I'm a mess. You're still good. And I love you. And I know that you love me. But man, things suck. They suck right now. God, I need you to intervene. I need you to do things. So for me, that's the three fundamental things that we need when approaching prayer. It's to approach with boldness and confidence because of what Jesus accomplished on our behalf. We need to be humble, remembering that God is the creator of the universe and everything, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it's to approach God in a way that is honest. Tell him how it really is. He knows anyway. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're feeling. So why try and pretend to be something you're not or use uh, words to describe things that aren't really you? It doesn't make any sense. So yeah, be bold, be humble, and be honest. Those are the three key things, I think, uh, to approach prayer in a really useful and healthy way. Uh, so looking at prayer, a good place to start is how did Jesus do it? Like, what did Jesus do? Jesus often, you'll find throughout the Gospels, Jesus went away to pray on his own all the time. Uh, my favourite uh, of these times is uh, what's recorded in Mark 1, where it says, early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. It's like he snuck out. There was this secret time with him and God, this personal 
one-on-one -on -one time away from all his disciples, all the people demanding his time. You know, Jesus loved his disciples. He loved his friends. He loved the people who were with him. But actually to love them well, occasionally, or quite regularly in fact, he needed to ditch them. <laughs> so Jesus, to love the people around him well, knew that to love them well, he had to actually ditch them occasionally to get like recharged with love from the Father effectively. You, know, you can give love when you spend time with the God who is love. So the best way to care for your family, those around you, is actually to, to take some time sometimes with just you and God. And to, you know, that time will help you to love them well because we're told to love God with all that we have and then love others. It's a natural progression. If you spend time with God who is love, you will then be able to love others. It's a natural consequence. So I just love the fact that Jesus does this sort of sneaks away and it follows by saying the disciples were looking for him for ages. Um, so Jesus was also kind of playing hide and seek, which is kind of fun. But the disciples, uh, they'd seen Jesus go away or, or not seen him and they had searched for him for ages. Uh, but they got to a point where they asked Jesus just flat out, hey, Jesus, how should we pray? How do we do it? And we get Jesus's response, which he, we know as today as the Lord's Prayer which is kind of weird in a way because it's not really the Lord's Prayer it's our prayer he gave it to us it was a gift from Jesus to his people it's our prayer it was given to us so I think it's strange it's called that um, but it's really such a good prayer and I like that it's pray like this pray like this. not you have to pray exactly this but pray like this um, Martin Luther, a you know fairly well-known Christian from uh, you know yesteryear, said that this prayer is a great blueprint, a great model to pray through, and he sort of describes how he takes a section at a time and prays through that. And I think that's a really healthy way to approach prayer. Um, one of the things I found fascinating about the Lord's Prayer is that I know sort of when I was growing up in school, we'd we'd recite it. Uh, in assemblies and in sort of more traditional churches we'd would pray through it together as part of the service like we're now pray the lord's prayer and it's so weird because uh it starts off by saying uh in matthew 6 when you pray go away by yourself shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private it's not a corporate prayer. It's a private prayer. It's a model for praying one-on-one -on -one with God. It's not a model for corporate prayer, and yet we've probably prayed it uh, more together in community than we have on our own, many of us. So I just find that fascinating. But yeah, it's a great prayer. It's really powerful and a great model to use for prayer. So I'll just read it through uh, in case you aren't familiar with it. So, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So that's the prayer. Um, and what I wanted to do is sort of give you uh, an insight into how I approach praying through the Lord's Prayer, which I would say is the best place to start. If you don't know where, how to pray, you don't know where to begin, the Lord's Prayer is the best place uh, to begin. Uh, what I would say, though, is it's not just the best place to begin. It's not, uh, if you don't know how to pray, pray like this until you get better, and then you can leave this prayer in the dust and move on to better things. It's pray like this, not be begin to pray like this, not begin to pray like this and then move beyond it. It's pray like this. Uh, it's, a, it's a blueprint for prayer full stop it's not um, a beginner's guide to prayer it's pray like this so I would encourage you don't um, sort of think of maybe you prayed it when you were younger prayed it in school and think oh that's something I had when I was younger I should know better now as an adult as to how to pray that's sort of a babyish prayer and I'm an adult now I need to pray in a more grown-up way no nope. um, pray like this <laughs> it's not begin to pray like this it's pray like this so yeah that's this so it starts off um with if you've uh, said it in school so the translation i read from was the nlt 
or as I like to call it, the normal language translation. Uh, but you may have prayed it slightly differently uh, growing up, or you may have heard it said slightly differently. You probably heard, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So what I would encourage you, first off with the Lord's Prayer, is use your language. Speak it, pray it, how you speak. Um, I don't generally speak and go around talking to people saying, uh, How art thou? thine fine morning you know that's that's just not the way i speak and i doubt many people speak like that um, so i would encourage you put it into your own words there's no point saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name if you don't say art and thy in normal conversation and it's especially bad if you don't know what the words mean so i know for me for many years i kept forgetting what the word hallowed meant and kept having to you know I ask someone, what does the word hallowed mean again? So for me, I pray, Heavenly Father, may your holy name be treated with the respect and awe it deserves. That's how I begin. Saying the same thing, but it's in John speak. It's in my language, it's in my dialect. So that's my first tip, is uh, pray in the language that is natural to you. You'd, I'd like to say you're meant, meant to pray honestly, um, so praying with words that aren't really natural to you doesn't feel like praying honestly to me. So I would encourage you in that. Use your language. Speak to God how you would normally speak. Because he knows how you're feeling and, and what you're thinking anyway. So you know, just, just be direct. <laughs> Don't try and put on a front or sound more holy or, or more righteous than, than you really are. Just, just be honest with God. Speak how you would normally speak. The second thing that I would suggest is... Uh, this idea of ripples. So if you take uh, the line, like, like, may your kingdom come, think about what that means for you, uh, like your family, your home, and then your community, your country, and the world. Sort of make it bigger as you go along. So for me, your kingdom come. I think, how, what does that look like for God's kingdom to come in me? So I'll pray something along the lines of, may I be an ambassador of your kingdom may i bring light and life where i tread may i speak life and not death may i represent you well in my work today in my dealings with other people may i represent you well jesus that may be me and then i'll think oh what about my community um what how what does it look like for god's kingdom to come in my community and i think well god i want to see miracles I want to see breakthrough. I want to see the least, the last, and the lost turn to you. And I'll then maybe list off the names of some people. It's like, God, I, I, I would love to see your kingdom grow through you bringing these people into it. So think about that. And then for me, I think Wales. Um, and think about kingdom coming in Wales. What does that look like? And I think, what does it look like? Uh, what am I seeing that in already? Almost to a certain extent. So... Things like the unity in the churches through things like PCC and New Wine. I say, like, God, continue to bless that. Continue uh, to unify your church. Build your kingdom. Continue to do what you're doing there. Carry on. Keep going, Father. Make it even better than it already is. Keep going. May your kingdom flourish, not just here in my community, but in Wales and in all these other churches full of other leaders and other people that I care about. And then I'll sort of go broad and think about the world. So for me, because we had the Koreans with us a couple of weeks ago, I will pray maybe for them. Say, you know, Father, may your kingdom come in South Korea. May I know their churches are massive over there, but continue to build. May they grow. May they not become complacent. Uh, may they continue to see wonderful things happening in their nation. Um, so that's how I sort of would view, take each line. And what I also do with that is because one of my three things is being honest, is I make sure that there are things that I genuinely really care about. Uh, for me, I struggle to pray for people I've never met and for places I've never been. I, ju I just do. I, I find it hard to um, put myself uh, in the shoes of a complete stranger and sort of try and honestly you know, plead for those people. That's probably you know a weakness in me 
but again just being honest so for me when i'm praying for for whales it won't be just generic father reach whales it will, i'll be thinking about the the other church leaders that i know the other people who i've met through things who are working in wales the other places i've visited and with the world i i can easily pray for korea now because i've met some koreans i can pray for places in america because i have friends in america i can pray for haiti uh, because of the work compassion is doing over there and the connections there there's places that i feel a connection to and i can pray for authentically and genuinely but if you ask me to pray for switzerland i've got no connection there other than at one point i went snowboarding there that's that's about it i don't feel particularly connected to that place so you know just having a, a tick list of places in the world to pray for that doesn't really resonate with me so i i would encourage you to really pray for what you care about don't just try and go tick through a list of well, i know today i'll pray for this country but really pray for the people and the places that you know i think that's well i find that easier um so maybe you'll find that easier i don't know maybe you're better than me at praying for people you've never met if, if you're you are great well done you um but for me i think it's okay to admit that sometimes people are beyond your your world beyond your context and that's okay so the next thing is add daily bread so uh, praying through this uh, in the lord's prayer a lot of people read this as here's the place where you present all of your desires all of the things that you want god to give you god to do in your life but for me i read this slightly differently for me this is all about nourishment Give us this day our daily bread i want to be well fed and there's other bits in the bible that speak about uh, jesus as the bread of life and how you know we don't just live on food but we are nourished from the words that come from the mouth of god so matthew 4 4 and john 6 35 say these things so for me when i read this i i think less here's my laundry list of things i want you to fix god and more plead with god to nourish me nourish me through his word i'll often follow prayer with reading god's word because you know the conversation should be two ways um and you know it gives god opportunity to speak so i'll say you know father speak to me through your word through what i read today may what you're trying to speak to me about may it leap off the page may i pay attention uh, may my spirit resonate with what it is you're trying to tell me today and so that's kind of thing so i'll think more about nourishment and i'll say like holy spirit make sure that i'm full to the brim today may i be uh full of life and hope and truth and all of your goodness today um so more about nourishment than about listing all the things that we want fixed i, I don't think many other people read it like that but i'm just being honest and sharing with you how i pray like this um so that's me but one of the things that i really like about the lord's prayer is that if you view it in that way you know you view the uh, daily bread not as a laundry list of fix this please god um and view it more as a i want you to nourish me god then the whole prayer is so god focused and not you focused so many of our prayers could be god i need you to do this for me i need you to change my situation i need you to move in this but actually this prayer is god your kingdom come your will be done your power nourish me with what i need from you i'm sorry for the times when i've walked away from what you want help me to walk within your will it's so not self-focused it's all about alignment aligning yourself with the will and desires of god there's a great bit uh, in joshua where joshua is about to go into battle and an angel turns up and joshua asks the angel whose side are you on and the angel just replies no which is a weird reply to a question uh, with potentially two answers but the angel just says no because the question is so fundamentally wrong he, he's joshua is wondering if the angel will fight for him or a fight for the other guys and the quiet what what really matters is whose side is joshua on is he on god's side and that's what 
I think the Lord's Prayer feels like to me. It's not about, oh God, come uh, make my life how I think it should be. It's God, may my desires and will align with what you want for my life. It's putting God first. It's aligning yourself with God, not trying to get God to do what you want him to do. So for me, that's really great. Uh, it also uh, has elements of the three things that I mentioned were fundamental to prayer. So uh, it starts with our Father. If that's not something that makes you confident and bold when approaching prayer, the fact that God is a Father who loves you, uh, then I don't know what else will. Um, but that should you know, fill you with confidence about the God that you're approaching in prayer. Um, it's all about your kingdom, your will. You know, that's that's humility, isn't it? Saying, God, I need you. I need to be aligned with what you want for my life. That's all about humility. And forgive me for the wrong things I've done and help me, help protect me from evil. Is acknowledging the fact that, you know, we're, we're weak and we get things wrong. It's being honest with God. So this prayer for me contains all three elements that I think are primary and key to praying well really or approaching prayer I also like the fact that it starts off uh, by saying uh, that God knows uh, what you're thinking and feeling it says uh, your, then your father who sees everything will reward you and don't be like um, the Pharisees or those who babble on for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him and then it tells you how to pray it's so easy to think, oh, God knows everything I'm going through. God knows what I'm thinking and feeling and experiencing. So I won't bother to pray because he knows already. What's the point? I'm just going to tell him the stuff that he already knows. But this like, bit of passage says, yeah, God knows. This is how you pray. I love that. It just bypasses it and goes, well, no, it doesn't matter that um, God knows everything already. You're still called to pray. You're still called to align yourself with God's will. You're still called to align yourself with the king of the universe and his desires for your life really like that just sort of bypasses the the problem uh you men may, then may think well where does the spirit the holy spirit fit into prayer and personal prayer uh, so there's a great verse in romans which says in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness we do not know what we ought to pray for but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans i really like this um there was a prayer meeting with some of the leaders in uh Pontypris recently and we were talking about our towns and, and the need for God and, and praying about things. And I could not get a single word out. I was, you know, welling up with, with tears and, and, and my heart was aching and, you know, just longing for God to move in my community and, and this town. And I couldn't get any words out. But God knows that I was there approaching him um, in a way that was the spirit was sort of interceding on my behalf, translating my my lack of words and my groans into something that uh, God the Father could work with and I, I really love that so sometimes you know we struggle with words but God sees our heart and so it doesn't even really matter to a certain extent if you get you know, there's no wrong words <laughs> there's no wrong way to pray it's all about how you approach prayer approach God and the Spirit can translate all of our, and our groans and our noises into stuff that is pleasing and, and good for God so I really like that. Um, and obviously, uh, praying in tongues is, is, is helpful. Um, not everyone does it. It's not a requirement. It doesn't uh, determine whether you're full of the Spirit or not if you can't pray in tongues. But certainly for me, uh, during the Korean Mission Week, um, I, my words run out very quickly when I pray. So <laughs> having sort of praying in tongues or singing in tongues to fall back on, I found really useful. Um, so I've probably prayed more in tongues during that week than I have done in a long, long time. Um, but yeah, there's different ways that the Spirit helps us uh, through praying. So top tips uh, of mine for prayer. Um, there are different ways of praying. Um, so for me, I used to pray on the walk from my house to the train station. I would put in my headphones and uh, just you know talk to God while walking to the train. And just the headphones were there to basically make me not look like a crazy person. Uh, it was there to for anyone who was looking at me to think, oh, he's not talking to himself. He's on a phone call. Um, you know, the same thing could be achieved by holding a phone to your ear, or if you're a young person, sort of about here in front of your face for reasons that I can't really comprehend. But 
so you know you, you can, there's different things you can do there's there's various apps and things that you can get for your phone so there's one that uh, my friends Ryan and Sarah uh, like called Lexio 365 that will give you a little thing to read through and then uh, something to pray about so there's that uh, I quite like one called prayer mate uh, which is basically just a, a, a list app so you can put in uh, the people and the things that you want to pray for say I want to pray for this thing every day um, I want to pray for all these people but you know pick a different person each day um, to, to pray for and slowly work through all these things and it's good because you also often have people say things and you go yeah I'll pray for you and it's so easy to forget so easy for things to slip through the net but if you put it you know in your phone in an app um, and work through that then that makes sure that you do actually pray for the people that you said you're gonna pray for which is great um, you can journal prayers uh, some of the people uh, during the week with the Koreans would write their prayers in a journal uh, which was which was cool um, the benefit of that I guess is that when you look back you can see how God has answered your prayers and been faithful through them so that's really cool uh, and then the the last thing I just want to say is sort of, with it, you need to be intentional. You need to really make a plan. Uh, so easy for us as evangelical, charismatic Christians to be like, the spirit will move us. Uh, everything has to be spontaneous. We have to go with the flow and we can't be shackled by um, plans and, 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 and calendar schedules and all that kind of thing, which is kind of bonkers considering that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is administration. You know, the Holy Spirit loves a good spreadsheet, loves a calendar. Um, and I think it's important to sort of work out where you are going to fit prayer in, where you're going to fit personal prayer into your life. You know, Jesus clearly uh, had the intent to say, first thing in the morning before everything goes crazy, I'm going to go away and pray. And that's a pretty good model. Um, but, you know, five o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning when the Koreans get up to pray seems a bit much to me. Um, I, I, I'm happy to do it first thing in the morning, but that is very, very early. Uh, but you know, some people, you may need to do that. Uh, some people, you, you might not function at all in the morning. You may have no words until you've drunk two cups of coffee. I don't know. Um, but you know, plan that into that coffee break or that second coffee break. Take the, that time to, to pray then. Work out when works for you. Uh, the next thing I wanted to say is I used to have um, a bracelet thing that you had all the ones that were like, what would Jesus do? Uh, fully rely on God. Oh, it was frog. And I had one called, what well, it said, push, which is pray until something happens. And I had this bracelet. I wore it. I knew that prayer was important. I knew that God could change things through prayer. And what I find now looking back is that despite the fact I was uh, confident the prayer would work. I had even bought a bracelet to say that I believe prayer will change things. I barely prayed. Despite the fact I you know, had believed it worked, I had a bracelet saying it worked, but I didn't do it. It's mad. I, I barely prayed. And so I would encourage you, like, be intentional with it. Don't just assume it's something that will happen. Put in the effort. Uh, there was a a thing I was reading online about um, good habits and there used to be uh, this general consensus that it takes about a month uh, to create a good habit but apparently that got completely debunked uh, and it's now uh, said to be between 18 days which sounds good and 244 days which is quite a lot and I would argue that if you're trying to you know make a habit a habit uh, on day 244 what you've really learned is how to be persistent not necessarily na naturally just created a habit it's you've taught yourself how to persevere and to keep going and to make time to put in the effort and make it a reality so I would encourage you in that finding time to pray making it a priority isn't easy it's not something you will naturally just you know you won't just wake up one day and and go oh you know I'll, I'll pray and I'll do this and it, you have to make an effort it's like going to the gym or going running or doing any sort of exercise you have to put the effort in you have to be committed to it 
you have to give it a real good go. And if you have a bad week or a bad day, you go again. You say, okay, I didn't do great, but I'm gonna give it another go. So be persistent. And there's a, a guy called Phil Moore who wrote a bunch of commentaries, which I really like. And I'm going through Exodus at the moment and reading his commentary on it. And he says that we don't wait well. We're into microwaving. God, on the other hand, is usually into marinating. And I found that that was so true. Um, during the, the week with the Koreans, uh, I would ha often have to uh, be taxi to them and you know take them to various venues and bring them back. And what I found was because I was you know the driver for a bunch of them, I ended up sticking around at things for longer than I normally would because I had no choice. I had to stick around, I was, I was their lift. Um, but I found that on those times where I thought, oh, you know, I'm tired, I'd usually go home at this point. I'd usually uh, think, oh, I've got this important thing that's coming tomorrow, I best just go to bed, I'd rest up. But actually the times where I got through that and pushed on, there was times of great blessing in prayer beyond that. So you know, it's almost like when you go running and hitting the wall and getting past it, you know, there's there's good stuff there. Um, in Exodus at the moment, um, uh, there's a great bit where Moses goes up the mountain to to meet with God and is there for 150 hours waiting for God. And so I found that really challenging, especially in light of how long the Koreans pray for. And I'm not saying that you know your morning routine should be four hours of prayer. Um, if you're not someone who really prays in the morning a minute of prayer would be wonderful you know that'd be great um it's not you know something that needs to necessarily be really really long in fact in the psalm um, in matthew 6 where jesus is describing the lord's prayer he says your words don't need to be long you don't have to use many words it's not it doesn't god doesn't it's not like an essay where you have to have like three thousand words for it to be valid if it's a few words it's just as valid just keep it simple keep it honest um, and that's fine um, so yeah I would encourage you in that just you know, we need to persist in prayer um, sometimes um, you may pray and you may you know be like oh well that, that was it and I didn't really get much out of that today but press on anyway keep going you know Moses had to be up the mountain for 150 hours before he heard God. How quickly do we give up in prayer and go, oh, I'll give it a go. I've given it five minutes. Um, I'll give up now. Um, so yeah, I'd encourage you, persevere, push in, push on to prayer, keep going. And so that is why I would like to finish uh, this uh, talk. I would just encourage you, if you don't know how to pray, if you don't know where to pray, um, begin with the Lord's Prayer and although you can pray any time in, in multiple different ways with multiple different prayers I think the Lord's Prayer at the start of the day is where to go because certainly Jesus says pray like this and the prayer includes things like give us this day and lead us not into temptation today uh, protect me from evil you know, all that stuff it, it kind of becomes a bit redundant if you pray that just before you go to sleep um you know, it's a bit late by that point there's not much of the day left to have your daily bread in so i'd encourage you do try and make time um, in the morning for prayer but also give yourself some grace if you um you know miss a day if you miss a week miss a month um don't beat yourself up just go again give it another go have another crack um because prayer it does you good. Thank you.